This episode of Tea with Jules is proudly brought to you by The Home. You can shop any of the items you see in this episode at thehome.com.au. I've been gunning. <laughs> I've been gunning for this day for like two years. I've been yeah. I've been putting it off for a long time. You finally cornered I me. Know. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> thank you for coming today to have some tea with me. Oh, thank this you. Is... I'm surprised that we're actually having tea. I mean, I know the title of the show and everything, but you never know whether it you're going real. to be served a cup of tea. So. It is a real deal. So thank please, you. <laughs> are you a tea drinker? Actually, I am a tea drinker. Um, I was only talking to someone about this the other day. I mean, I, generally on a daily basis, of course, I drink coffee. But I think on the, the more fragile days or the, you know, I think a cup of tea works wonders. It certainly does. Mm. And you're a tiny bit fragile right now. Yeah, the body's not working as well as I would like it to be. So I apologise up front for the, the croaky voice. If you need a hockaloogie at no, any point, don't just go that. ahead. <laughs> I know it's not great on radio actually trying not to cough and then laughing hysterically at the boys and you know yeah sounding like a 70 year old smoker (laughs) I promise I'm not. (laughs) Now Kate you are just Australia's daughter everybody knows who you are Mm. everybody loves you and you've been in our lives since we were kids so (laughs) we feel like we know you already Mm. but I want to I want to go back and just get it from start to finish. Not finish. Well, yeah. Start to now. Maybe it's not as exciting as you think, though. <laughs> no, I'm sure it is. I'm sure you've got some little pearls in there that we don't know about. Mm. Obviously, you started working on Home and Out when you were a little kid. So yes. can we take it a little back, back a little bit further than even that? Oh, look. Well, I I was actually born in... Um, is that how far we're going? Yeah, let's do <laughs> it. That, I um, feel like we have like, to with this you. Is my life. Like... This is your life. Um, no, I, well, I was born in um, rural New South Wales in a place called Goulburn. My dad was a, a policeman, actually, so he'd done a whole lot of his training down there and then found his way back there to start his family and work. I'm the eldest of four children, wow. so there are three three girls and a boy in our family, mm-hmm. um, and like I said, I'm the, I'm the eldest of the the clan the boss Uh, um, well I don't know about being the boss I am bossy if I think if you ask (laughs) if you ask the rest of them but I think that comes with yeah that comes with being the eldest and I think there's a sense of responsibility you have and Mm -hmm. my mum always tells this story about when I was very little and we'd if we ever had guests come to the house or you know friends would drop in for a cup of tea um and being the eldest I would always shush the guest at the front door and say that all the other kids are in bed and this is me being probably two or three so <laughs> I think from a very young age I was um, you know in in charge of everybody else um, which can be difficult throughout the teen years the rest oh, of them yeah. hate it and as far as kind of acting goes or how I started I think I was only about six years old when um, my dad saw a, an advertisement in the local newspaper for a, um, a, like a kids agency um, and my dad was an, an incredibly shy child and a shy adult he's, mm-hmm. he's come out of his skin a little more now he was you know somewhat kind of crippled by his shyness and I think that more than anything he he didn't want us to be like that right my parents are not stage parents at all but it, it came from that place when he mentioned the ad the ad in the paper to my mum. My mum thought it was the worst idea and although she'd never met, my parents aren't in the industry at all, never have been. I don't think they ever knew anyone in the industry before I started working in it. Um, But my mum's reaction to dad was that um, it was a silly idea because you know what all of those people on the television are like and it's not the world we want our children to be in. (laughs) But my dad ignored her and put me into this agency anyway. And then I did a few things like I think, you know, when you're a kid, you kind of go along to all of those auditions and you're in a room full of other other kids and mums. And I think I did a... I think the first thing I ever did was a, an uh, orange juice commercial, Sunburst Orange Juice. And I think I did a cereal commercial. And the first role I necessarily landed was in the miniseries Cyclone Tracy. Mm-hmm. And that was when I was six. And then, I mean, I'd like to say I kind of had a long career before Home and Away came along, but... I didn't really have much time to no. fit too much in, so I, I it was I was seven, uh, eight, um, I think, when I did the audition for Home and Away in 1987, and that's when we filmed the pilot, and it went to air in the January of 1988. 
and that's kind of the rest is kind of history if yeah. you know what I mean that yeah. but that's where it that's where it started I still I stayed at school I would kind of come and go from the school and my poor mum I think back now especially now that I've become a mother um, I think about being the eldest of four children my mum taking me to set and to auditions and things like that I really I don't know how she did it to be honest and did she come around to the idea of that's what you were doing? <laughs> well, now? I guess so. And I think too, my experiences, or, or certainly my experience with Home and Away, is a very unique one. Mm -hmm. It's not maybe a true representation of the industry as a whole. I think it's very, a very special, warm environment, mm -hmm. and it's not always like that. Right. But for me, it turned out well, and it got mum on side, and it was all fine. Yeah. And, you know, you're eight years old, mm -hmm. and. Would you say you were a full-time actor? Is that well, what not it was? really, because I, 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 I was I always juggled schooling mm -hmm. as well. So, um, I mean, I, it used to upset me at times because I think I'd go to school and then there were kids at school that would say, "Oh, you're only you're only doing this part time," and then I'd go to work and everyone was saying, "Oh, you're only here part time." I was kind of like had these two part time jobs, but if you put the two together, it was actually probably more than a full time. Yeah. When you went for your first audition or when you got your first role. Mm. Do you know how people get bitten by the bug? Was it like that for you? Yeah, I, look, I think that um, my experience is, is, would be much different to if I had um, finished school, gone to uni or gone to acting school, or you know, and then and really um, set out to chase this dream of mine. I think that for me, um, I almost fell into the industry. It, I ended up loving it, but I, like I said, um, I only ever kind of, dabbled in it because it was a hobby and because it, it was like it was an extracurricular activity it was like mm. you know some kids learnt to play the violin mm -hmm. and I played Sally on Home and Away I mean in actual fact I thought that you know throughout my schooling years I thought that you know one day I would grow up and get a real job kind of thing <laughs> you know I had I went to an agricultural high school and so I had interests in you know vet science and things and I thought oh well, I'll, I'll end up doing that and then the years went on and then I realised that this wasn't just a hobby. I was emotionally attached to the work that I yeah. did, I guess, because I'd grown up doing it. And also, Home and Away is such a beautiful place to work. Why on earth would I give up a job that I, that I loved yeah. so much? And I had been given this gift almost, so I was just going to stick it out for a while. And that while happened to be 20 years. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> It really is a lot of your life. I know. It? Well, I mean, now it doesn't feel like it's such a big part of my life because I'm now 38 years old and 20 years in that it's kind of, you know, it's becoming a less and less mm -hmm. big, uh, big part of my life. So tell me about, I mean, a child star, let's call it that. Mm. How did you deal with childhood, adolescence, into adulthood with all eyes on you? Well, I don't know what it's like what it was like not to grow up on TV. Mm -hmm. So my upbringing and, and the way I grew up and developed is completely normal. Yeah, that's your I, version yeah, of normal. Yeah, it is yep. my normal. Mm -hmm. So um, I know it's not, it, it, it's not the norm necessarily, mm -hmm. but I think it's about as normal as you could get. It, I mean, it, you say child star, but it's certainly... Um, especially in this country, I don't think our version of child star is the same as, you know, the, the Olsen twins right. or Drew Barrymore, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, look, I don't, I don't know how I, I did it. I think that um, the things that um, really looked after me w was the environment. I know I've already touched on this, but Home and Away is a very unique environment and it was like a family. Yeah. And as much as I may have been on show and people knew who I was, I was always because I was the baby, I was incredibly protected mm -hmm. as well. And also, my, I mean, my family, my my real family mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at home um, have a lot to do with the fact that I think I've turned out all right, you know, as, as best as can be expected. Mm -hmm. Mum and dad weren't stage parents. This was just a hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, they always threatened me with... Um, having to give up this job that I loved if my grades at school suffered and mm -hmm. you know so they 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 never treated my work or the fact that I happen to be famous as more important than anything else mm -hmm. and certainly not any more important than the other kids in our family you know mm -hmm. like we all had our own interests mm -hmm. I just happened to be on the telly mm -hmm. I think that that 
gives you some kind of perspective. Mm. It doesn't. It also teaches you that just because you're famous doesn't make you better than anybody else. Mm. And I think that that's really important. Mm-hmm. I think it was all about balance. Mm. That's not to say that it wasn't hard and that, you know, that, that outside that kind of the inner sanctum almost, you know, like my family at home and my family at home in a way it, that it's not you that thinks what you do is special or different. It, it's other people that yeah. make it special mm-hmm. or different or, or feel threatened by it so they make you feel bad about it so you know I had certain issues with you know kids when I was at school not the kids I actually went to school mm-hmm. with because they knew that I in fact I would go to school and not talk about it on purpose yeah or, on purpose right. like I didn't mm-hmm. I, it almost embarrassed me but it is it's strange you, you know like I would be sitting at school and the girl next to me in my textiles class would have Dita Brummer on the front of her folder and I'm like well I was hanging out with him yesterday he's I hate him you know he was like my older brother he's not cool or sexy or attractive he's certainly not worth a smash hits poster on the wall he totally was yeah well he he actually was now in hindsight I understand how amazing they all were but they were like they were my brothers and sisters really Mm. so there was nothing special about them and that's probably why I've never had a celebrity crush. I don't find never? actors, no actors particularly attractive really? at all. Yeah, so I, you know, I had issues with other other kids, you know, on the train on the way to school and things like that. But, you know, I think I'm so far beyond that now that I, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt so much anymore. And also I wouldn't have wanted to give up something I loved doing just because I didn't want to handle that aspect. You can tell that about you. I think you can tell that you've come from such a good um, solid foundation of oh, upbringing. Thank you. you really can. You're 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 all class. I've got you fooled. <laughs> no, it's the actress in me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a great I'm actress. I'm so um, <laughs> you know balanced and great. <laughs> so normal. Yeah, I'm so normal. I'm so normal. If I just keep telling myself I'm so normal, this it will be real. <laughs> As a child, especially like when you're okay. Here's your script. Here's what I have to remember. Like, what is it? Just a gift that you're given oh, as an actress? I think it's easier when you're a child. You absorb. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, I, in saying that, yes, remembering dialogue and all of that is a, is a skill. But then it, it it worked against me when it came to my schooling, because I would, I've kind of my brain is trained to remember things for very short periods of time. Right. So I would never, I, I've never been one of these people that would spend the week learning all of my scripts. I would, you know, on, on set on an average day, I would sit in the makeup chair. I'd learn, like look at my 10 scenes or whatever it was gonna be that day. Um, and I'd be able to retain it for that short period of time. Got it, yep. And then an hour later, if you'd asked me to do that scene again, yep. I, w- I would not. It wouldn't okay. even be there, mm-hmm. which doesn't help you when you're sitting an English exam and you've read a novel and you've had to remember everything right. about the characters. Yeah, so, okay. Um, Different side of the brain. Yeah, <laughs> I think for me, I was also very blessed with the fact that I, pl- you know, in those early years, I played a character that was. I'd played her for so long that there was probably a whole lot of similarities between us. And in some ways, the lines at times may have even been blurred. Yeah. Mm. It it always fascinates me when you see a child acting because they have to tap into that emotion. And even if it's happy emotion, whatever whatever it is, it's it's so fascinating to watch. I think think that comes from not from children not feeling self-conscious. Yeah. So they can just throw Uh, it all in. And I think that that's the difference when you, you watch great actors yeah and maybe not so great actors um is that those incredible actors have no they're not they're almost not aware of themselves no nor are they aware of cameras or anything Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. um and they just really are in that moment and now you've dragged me into talking about acting and i hate (laughs) doing it sorry (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to be one of those people. <laughs> no, I, I find it so interesting. Yeah. It is so far from anything that I know that I find it fascinating. I, I think a good actor, you can always tell a bad actor because you can tell they're acting, I yeah. suppose, but a good actor. And they're aware like, of themselves, I think. It's almost like yeah. they're watching themselves as it's unfolding. And you can see the lines ticking over. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay, we'll get off the acting okay, train good, now. Good, good. <laughs> Sorry. So you, you touched on a little bit earlier how you contemplated kind of coming off the show and Mm. maybe trying something else Mm. you said a normal job yeah what pulled you back just on a really basic level I I really I just enjoyed it yeah and I was also really grateful because I I knew that 
working, especially in in the acting industry, just working every day, whether it's for one year, not even 20 years, is not the norm. And so I, well, I, I guess I kind of thought, well, I may as well just keep doing this while it's being handed to me, you yeah. know? And I suppose because I had done it from such a young age, I was... I was really attached to it. It was, it was a bit of a security. Yeah. So there was there was probably for a, a long time a sense of um, maybe fear around well, if I'm not doing this, what what could I possibly do? But then when I when it actually came time to leave, which was twenty years down the track, mm -hmm. it was as if there was no decision to be made. Right. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, I felt the right time. Yeah, I, like it was almost as if the planets all aligned mm -hmm. and I just knew that it was now was the right time. It was 20 years. I was approaching 30. I had started to receive like a little bit of success as far as people recognising the work that I had done. I started to win some awards and there were little things like that that I thought, well, how many more boxes can I tick here? Mm -hmm. it was, maybe it was like a coming of age kind of thing where I thought, oh, I need to work out who, who am I without this thing, mm. this amazing thing. And as crazy as it sounds, it was, it was as though everything I'd ever achieved in my life was because of someone that didn't in everyone else's mind didn't even exist you know right. this girl called Sally Fletcher and she's done all these wonderful things and is a great person and everyone loves her well but well who am I without that yeah. person mm -hmm. so did you have a plan or did you just sort of stop and then reassess well my plan was to um have, have a holiday and, well deserved yeah and I didn't really like because I didn't well I've worked since I was eight the idea of that freaked me out a bit that kind of scared me but I I didn't have any grand plan I just thought, I know this is what I have to do and if I don't work for a while it doesn't matter. I've kind of got some points on the board maybe yeah. that I can, you know. But it didn't work out like that because once I decided to leave, um, I was approached by Nova to do breakfast radio with American Rosso. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, maybe this is like the best, this could be the best thing for me. I'm still, I'm still working, I'm still, there's still some consistency I'm still in the industry in some way, but I, I'm giving people a little rest from me mm -hmm. as well. I don't mm -hmm. have to see my face in their lounge room every <laughs> night. And I'll be learning a new skill. Mm -hmm. So I made the decision to join the boys. And was that a good time? Yeah, it was great. It was good. Well, you know what? It was good in some ways, but breakfast. I thought everyone was saying to me, oh, breakfast radio, you know, you're going to be exhausted. And I had this, you know, I was a bit cocky, I think, and... I would say, well, you know, I've spent many years getting up at the crack of dawn and heading to Palm Beach, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. The amount of times I've seen the sun come up over Palm Beach, yep. what can breakfast radio really do to me? But it's awful. It's gruelling, isn't <laughs> it? It's so awful. It's in the middle of the... Like it's well, it feels like now. that. I mean, it's, it's shift work, basically. Mm. Yep. And I guess as far as shift work goes, heading into a studio and, you know, having a ham and cheese toast and <laughs> talking some rubbish for a couple of hours is is about as good as it gets mm. but it's still it is grueling but it taught me it did it taught me a great deal and I did have a lot of laughs as well and in the midst of all of this obviously you've got a baby May yes. who's just turned two yes. who is so cute she's so lovely she is very cute but she looks exactly like her daddy so everyone <laughs> says to me oh she's gorgeous she's exactly like Stuart <laughs> isn't she I'm like oh thanks I get that too <laughs> yeah. So, no. I like, do know that I, I carried her. Yeah, yeah exactly. I did carry her, and I was there on the day when yeah. she arrived. So I do know she's mine. Pretty but, sure. Um, but yeah, he's pretty chuffed by the compliments. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I mean, they have to do something, yeah, right? Exactly. Can you tell me a little bit about your your love story, mm. with Stuart? We knew each other many years ago, um, kind of through other people, and then we met again, and we were both single, and you know, we were at the races and so we were all you know dressed up to the nines probably looking our best yeah. and I guess that got us over the line <laughs> <laughs> so, that always that's, helps. Kind of, that's kind of how it how it all began and I I do often joke that if I was doing breakfast radio at the time we met so if he could fall in love with someone who was at their worst <laughs> during that time then right. maybe you know maybe it was going to work out 
And was he playing football at the time? He did, but he was in his final year of football. Okay. He did then go on to play some um, rugby league over in France. Mm -hmm. That was the year we were married, actually. Um, so he did a little, there was a little bit more football. I think I only ever saw him play, I mean, I'd obviously seen him play throughout his career. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he was the man I was going to marry at that point. But, um, but I think when we were together, I, I only ever saw one live Oh really? Match. Yeah, yeah. I I get so confused with the league and the the other one. What's the other one? League and union. Union. Oh God, you are bad. At yeah, it. I can't remember what it's called. I'm so bad. No, I'm not a. I went to a school that played rugby union, but I don't. Yeah, I don't understand. It's yeah, all about understanding it. It's like cricket. Oh yeah. It's See, I understand that more because guy plays cricket. Does he? Oh, y yes. Like now, as an adult. Okay. Yes, oh, okay. and he loves it when we go to watch him for 15 hours I was going to say, at least with football, it's like it's 80 over. or 90 minutes or something. No, is... it's not for me. No. Mm -hmm. So do you consider yourself a wag? No, I don't. Oh. Is that a bad thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not offended by the term. You can call me what you like. I've been called much worse. But I don't think Stuart is your classic footballer either. He just so played because he was, was great. what was about him? that you were like, that's it, done deal. This is going to sound really immature mm -hmm. um, uh, because it's not the only reason, I'm sure, but he was one of these people who really loved his dog. And I know that, oh. now I'm going to wish I'd never started this story <laughs> because it's not going to sound as deep as I'm meaning for it. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he was, he's very kind mm -hmm. and he was very nurturing. Mm -hmm. I could see that in certain things uh, no, like I his dog. Uh, no, oh, I understand awful, that. You can it? tell a lot about a person how Would they treat be? animals yeah. for sure. And so when May was born, how did that alter your universe? First and foremost, your priorities change and the way you see the world and maybe, yeah, the, the, the things that are important change. And you also realise it's not all about you anymore, you yeah. know. You still need to hold on to your own sense of self and I think that that can be a challenge as well like you know who I'm a, I am a mother now but I'm, I'm still Kate yeah it's just about finding balance really and also I think that the one thing everyone always said to me was don't wish it away mm -hmm. it, it's over so quickly and I've you realize that now May turn two in August and it's absolutely flown and I think that in those you know the first five weeks when she was born I thought those those weeks would never end and mm -hmm. now all of a sudden we're you know she's talking and making little jokes and just being great every day. Being a career woman mm. and a mother and a wife and everything else you have to juggle yeah. in life, how do you do the juggle? I'm very blessed with the work that I do do. And I think that um, now that I'm working in radio again, again with Nova, but at, at the other end of the day, doing the drive show with Tim and Marty, that job couldn't have come along at like a more perfect time because I am working every day but it's hours that suit me. Yep. As far as juggles go, yep. this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And Kate, have you ever had a pinch yourself moment where you're just like, what, hold on a sec, is this actually happening to me? Because growing up in the industry, you get exactly what you said about Dita Brummer. Yes. You sort of get a little bit numb to the it's hard to bits. impress me. It's hard to yeah. impress you. It's hard to impress you because you've kind of been there, done that, seen everything. I did meet Prince Charles once and oh. and I thought that was pretty amazing yeah. and it was the first time I got really like overwhelmed with nerves because I realised I hadn't done my research about how I was meant to greet him and I was meeting him with a friend who actually knew him quite well so of course the way that this person was addressing right. him was probably fine for them but maybe not fine for me and yeah. then, oh god that was pretty amazing what about winning a logie so it caught me off guard and it's a nice i think for me it was just really nice to be rewarded for not aggressively trying right. to win something mm -hmm. yeah just to turn up and um do your job do it reasonably well, I guess, um, and not step over somebody to do, to to get there. Right. So I think it, it's a nice vote of confidence for people who are kind. So yeah. good things do come to people that 
are nice to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I just, it's okay. I just kind of plotted along oh. and then someone decided to give me a Logie. Oh, that, it, that can actually work as well. I l love that you just said that. Okay. I wouldn't be able to say it again because I don't remember no, it, so we'll have to watch it back. that is perfection. <laughs> and I, I often talk that way when you speak to young people, there's so much pressure on being the, the most popular or the prettiest or the whatever, you know, the Have least the kind of, yeah, all of, all of and, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not trying to be down on myself, but I was like, I was the, I was the frumpy teenager. Like puberty was not kind to me. And I was, I just turned up and wore an oversized t-shirt and did my job every day um, and had to watch all these other people come through that I thought that were kind of just given these gifts. Um, and it's just nice to be able to say to young people that it's okay. You just, you just, just wait, just yeah. do what you do well. You're and PS, by the way, you mm. look amazing. Oh, thanks. Must be age. Yeah. You're looking good. It's because girl. puberty was so unkind <laughs> to me. I had to come out the other end at some point. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Kate Ritchie, I just love you even more if I didn't love you enough before okay. this. Thank you. No, thank you for being such a great example. I'm so I'm so glad you came today, really. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for the cup of tea. No worries. It's actually cold now. It's freezing. So. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>